for watching the daily debate uh, live from Cairo. I'm Tahrid Hussein and I have the pleasure of your company for the coming hour. We'll be talking about more than one important story and important uh, headlines in the news. Well, on that special episode, we'll be uh, talking about a very important uh, topic about Egypt opening relations with the outside world. Egypt's foreign policy is based on openness to the whole world with particular focus on mutual interests and uh, respect. And from that perspective, Egypt extended its hands in order to collaborate with all countries through very balanced relations. Egypt has always had historic relations with most of South and Latin American countries, particularly because of their continued supporting stance towards the Middle East uh, region causes. One of those countries is Panama. Recently, Egypt and Panama had signed and uh, had agreed to establish mechanisms of cooperation in maritime affairs. Uh, Egypt has been seeking to collaborate and to benefit from Panama's experience in the logistics field and logistics development as part of uh, the initiative to maximize the benefit of the national mega project of Suez Canal and its extension. So Egypt is opening to the whole world and Egypt is seeking to open new horizons of cooperation with Panama. On that uh, very special note, we're really honored to have with us to host His Excellency uh, Ambassador uh, Thomas Gaudia, uh, Panama's Ambassador to Egypt. Thank you very much, Ambassador Gaudia, for coming to the debate live tonight. And happy Ramadan. Great that you are sharing with us debate on one of the lovely uh, evenings of Ramadan tonight. Thank you so much, Excellency. Thank you so much for having me here. And uh, we'll be talking with Excellency Ambassador Gaudia about more about uh, horizons of cooperation between Egypt and Panama in more than one domain, how both countries are seeing eye to eye vis-a-vis -vis, uh, political dimensions, economic sector, investment, development, how about the cultural exchange, the people to people, that's the soft power, and more on a very special episode of the Daily Debate tonight with Excellency Ambassador Thomas Gordia, Ambassador of Panama to Egypt. On uh, the very first notice, the very first segment of the show, uh, in two years since President Abdel Fattah Sisi assumed office, many achievements have been made in different sectors. One of those sectors is uh, the main Egypt's foreign policy. Before we proceed uh, uh, to our discussion about that, we'll be having this important exclusive interview that our colleague Mona Musalhi had conducted earlier in the day with the official spokesman of the Foreign Ministry, Councillor Ahmed Abu Zaid. Let's watch and we'll be back. Egyptian diplomacy is also a cornerstone to the uh, Egyptian developmental plans, particularly Egypt's vision for 2030. Um, how are you dealing with that fight, particularly that it is uh, transferring the positive side of Egypt? I think this is a good question because it, uh, it shows the other uh, side of the coin, which is the developments that are happening in Egypt that needs to be showcased and uh, 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 shown to the, to, the, to the international community. Because unfortunately, lately, we recognize that there is only focus on the on the negative incidents that could happen and uh, trying to uh, to uh, portray that the 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 only image of egypt is an image of uh, terrorism or attacks or uh, or uh, uh, hijacking of planes or others so um, we have embarked on this on the strategy this strategy of trying to showcase the 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 good examples the um, the success stories that are happening in the country and this include the uh, developmental projects the uh, inauguration of the Suez Canal the uh, the uh, uh, Suez Canal access showing investment opportunities uh, also uh, uh, showing the or explaining the the 2030 vision for sustainable development with all its uh, its axes and all its sectors um, so this there is a main focus uh, at this time to show all those developments that are happening in the country uh, also it's a 
main, uh, it's very high on the priority list of the foreign minister in his uh, foreign visits to different countries to show the, uh, the, the business opportunities, the investment opportunities in the country, and uh, our missions abroad are organizing uh, business trips for, uh, for the private sector uh, from Europe, from the United States, to come to Egypt and to see the opportunities as well. Uh, I'm sure you would recognize the level of, uh, of visits by, the, by foreign, foreign ministers to Egypt lately. Uh, most of those visits are uh, accompanied by uh, the signature of uh, economic uh, and trade uh, agreements uh, in different uh, sectors of, of, the, of the economy. Uh, all this manifests that, that uh, Egypt is really um, on the road, on the right track with regard to economic and social development, uh, that we are keen on, um, on partnering with, uh, with other countries and other organizations. Um, we have a lot of opportunities for investment and, in fact, the, uh, one of the highest uh, uh, rates on, on investment is in Egypt compared to other countries in the world. So uh, this is the main objective right now, is to focus on those uh, fields and those areas and try to, uh, uh, and it's the way as well to counter uh, this, uh, uh, you know, negative narrative that is spreading and try to, uh, to show um, uh, to our partners the, the level of developments that happened in Egypt over the last uh, two years and the objective for the coming, uh, for the coming years. Welcome back. Well, those were excerpts of the exclusive interview that Mona Musalhi conducted earlier in the day for Nile TV International with the Councillor Abu Zaid, Ahmed Abu Zaid, the spokesman of the Foreign Ministry. And reading the highlights of the achievements of the Foreign Ministry in two years, we have with us over the phone Excellency Ambassador Nabil Badr, former Assistant Foreign Minister. Ambassador Badr, thank you so much for being with us. Oh, thank you. Hello. Uh, I have with me, have the honor of having Excellency Ambassador Thomas Gardia, Ambassador of Panama to Egypt. And uh, we're talking tonight about how Egypt is open to the whole world and about how we're really interested in, in seeing in the first hand the Panamanian experience through the exchange of technical delegations between both countries. So Egypt is open up to the world. In two years, we have diversified our relations and there has been milestones in the Egyptian foreign policy. Mr. Ambassador. Well, I think this is important, and I, I'm, I'm happy that you have the Panamian, uh, Panamian uh, ambassador here. Um, I had my experience in Latin America myself. I went to Panama. This goes back to more than 30 years now. And I saw the canal there, and um, very good people, very uh, talented, uh, uh, and actually out looking to... Uh, good relations with us and with the world at large. Now, if you are asking me about the developments in Egypt, I would like to summarize in the following bullets. Number one, well, regaining balance in Egyptian foreign policy. Two, expanding naturally and uh, regaining the land which has been lost in our external relations yeah. uh, for that reason, that reason, for some years. Mm -hmm. Three, uh, solidifying um, a nationalistic uh, policy which of course seeks the good of people and which is at the same time quite open to the world problems, world concerns, the world we share together and what we should do together in terms of the, our bilateral and our multilateral policies together. And right. this is demonstrated in the relationship which Egypt maintains on the bilateral level as well as on the uh, international organizations yeah. from the United Nations and so on. Naturally, also, I must add to that, developments that have uh, been really one of probably the negative marks of, of that decade uh, like terrorists, for instance, mm. sharing the world in fighting terrorism in an effective and in a convincing way. In other words, uh, regrettably, in world politics, 
sometimes the term of being what is called an uh, international good citizen mm. is not always quite evident. Some, some concerns try, if I might say, to get something out of mm. using this or that. Uh, again, it's a common target, which is fighting terrorism, because terrorists, like any bad malady that expands here and there, should be fought and should be fought effectively. I think Egypt has proven uh, and gained, of course, confidence worldwide uh, in so doing. Mm -hmm. uh, other, uh, something else which is looking, and I know that professionally from my work and my background as well, that uh, we seek to develop the ground of common interest between Egypt and other countries. Right. Um, it's not a matter of distance. It's, it's not a matter of being close or being far. No, uh, we share certainly common uh, uh, dimensions. And this is demonstrated in the relationship that extends from what is termed world powers to other countries, regional, uh, continental or otherwise, uh, in, in looking for what we should do together. Uh, and right. there is uh, a scope which Egypt has explored recently, which extends from politics to the cultural exchanges, technical exchanges as well, and actually uh, building something on the common and joint practices. Like, for instance, in the case of Canada, uh, of Panama, uh, you, you have, of course, uh, the Panama Canal, which is quite famous. Right. Uh, I remember the canal quite well. I, 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 I remember also the area of uh, uh, Colonia, which is around it, mm. and what should be done to develop that economically. Right. We can hear, that's only one example. Mm -hmm. Of course, that extends to the common grounds we share with the world. Right, Excellency Ambassador Nabil Badr, former Assistant Foreign Minister, thank you very much for reading with us the news and highlighting this important uh, topic and a sense of cooperation with Panama. Of, uh, this report about uh, Panamanian Egyptian relations, Egypt and Panama establishing maritime cooperation, and we'll be back to discuss with His Excellency Ambassador Thomas Cardia more concerning uh, our relations. agreed to establish mechanisms for cooperation in maritime affairs. The Panama Maritime Authority reported that Minister of Transport Saad al Giyushi and the Panama's Minister of Maritime Affairs, George Barakat, have established mechanisms for cooperation in maritime affairs between the two countries during a meeting in the city of Alexandria. It said that both Giyushi and Barakat recognized the experience that Panama has in the logistics development linked to the administration of the canal and port activity. In addition, Minister Giyushi expressed Egypt's interest to see firsthand the Panamian experience through an exchange of technical delegations. Barakat, during his stay in Egypt, spoke at the V Conference of Maritime Logistics on opportunities of Panama thanks to the expansion of the canal. After his presentation at this conference, the Minister and President of the Arab Academy for Science, Technology and Maritime Transport, Ismail Abdel Ghaffar, signed a letter of intent providing for the academic cooperation in the training of seafarers between Panama and Egypt. Alexandria's Faculty of Maritime Transport of the Arab Academy has an integrated simulator center and training center for survival and training at sea. There has been positive impact of the Suez Canal and its new extension on decreasing the period of transit for ships. The new Panama Canal expansions, however, are expected to boost competition over world trade. Half of Asia's trade to the U.S. passes through Suez Canal, while the other half passes through the Panama Canal projecting growth in the container ship manufacturing and maritime transport industries in the near future, especially in Southeast Asia and the Middle East. Last September, the presence of both countries, President Afatih Sisi and Panama's President Juan Carlos Varela, 
had expressed interest in promoting the exchange of experiences on the operations of the Panama Canal and the Suez Canal in a bilateral meeting held in New York. In a separate agreement, Agriculture Minister Hassan Fayed met with Panama's ambassador to Cairo to discuss joint cooperation in the field of genetic engineering. In the meeting, Fayed signaled to Egypt keenness to benefit Panama's expertise in improving the rates of field production of Indian corn using genetic engineering as well as husbandry resources and ways of reducing agricultural pollution. Both officials stressed the importance of joint expertise exchange in the framework of the accord active between both countries. A program that takes you to explore investment opportunities in different sectors. Projects that attract billions of dollars of investment. Egyptians are given a chance to develop. Join us in taking a message of peace and development from Egypt to the world. Egypt is on a new track. On our own, we glitter. Together, we shine. Excellency Ambassador Guardia, as uh, we've seen in the promo, together we shine. We shine through our relations, uh, we shine through uh, our established relations that are historic. How can we describe Egyptian Panamanian relations today? Well, thank you so much for having me. And first of all, let me congratulate the second anniversary of, uh, of the government of President Sisi. As the promo said, our president, uh, Mr. Varela, and President Sisi met in, in uh, New York in September last year yeah. uh, to further t uh, strengthen the ties between Panama and Egypt. I think we're in a very good level of relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, Panama recognizes the contribution that President Sisi has done, uh, especially completing the roadmap to tor total uh, normalization of the situation in Egypt and Egypt we see Egypt again the table in the international fora, mm -hmm. in the regional fora. Egypt plays a very important role at the regional level, and Panama recognizes this very much. And, and this is the message that President Varela transmitted to President Sisi back in uh, September in New York. So we're definitely in a very good level of cooperation, and uh, we see that this there's uh, many areas that we can cooperate and one of the uh, key areas is the maritime cooperation and logistic development uh, mm -hmm. that has been mentioned. Right. The maritime cooperation and logistics development, I guess we have taken relations in that field into new highs, Mr. Ambassador. Well, that is the purpose. Yeah. Definitely that is the purpose. Uh, we very much uh, congratulate Egypt for the rapid opening of the new Suez Canal that was undertaken in historical uh, uh, a time in, under, in, in one year as, yeah. as it was established and, and promised by President Sisi and, and Noel Mamish and this definitely opens a new level of, uh, for the world trade that goes through Suez Canal. Panama will very soon in June 26 of this month in a few weeks will open the expansion project of the Panama Canal also modernizing the Panama route. So definitely uh, the area of maritime transportation and logistic is one thing that we can share experiences uh, between Panama and Egypt and for mutual benefit. Right. How are we working, I mean, in the coming stage? Definitely according to a mechanism, and I know that especially in the field of uh, logistics, uh, there are many lessons taught from the Panamanian experience. Well, I think uh, we can start by having an exchange of, of visits mm -hmm. uh, to get to know the, the project of Panama. Mm -hmm. and what has been the experience, the good and the bad, because uh, there's always, we can also learn from the challenges that are up, uh, that happen in, in each country, in each historical development. 
Panama can also learn from the experience of Egypt. And I think uh, the technical visits are very important, mm -hmm. as well as the high-level visits, the exchange of visits. We recently had, as it was mentioned, the visit of our uh, Minister for Maritime Affairs to Egypt, participating in a conference in Alexandria, a meeting with the Minister of Transportation, meeting with the Director of the Port of Alexandria, bringing this message of what uh, we have done and, and the way forward and the challenges that we have at home. Mm -hmm. And some of the challenges we share also with Egypt. Yeah. So I think it's very important. And uh, just on the side also of the legal aspect, it's also very important to to share the experience that we have in transforming our institutions mm -hmm. to better adapt to the uh, the needs of the client and the maritime world. Right. Uh, concerning this sense of partnership in the maritime world, uh, uh, tell me, Excellency, what were the main points of focus in your meetings with Admiral Mamish uh, about steps further and how can both the canals, I mean, uh, collaborate together into further sense of cooperation? Well, first of all, very grateful to Admiral Mamish for his uh, personal friendship and his welcoming attitude always and to dialogue with Panama and the Suez Canal. Uh, we are uh, very much looking forward for his visit to Panama uh, for the ceremonies of the opening of the expansion canal that uh, we just recently had a press conference in Cairo a few days ago and he expressed uh, his uh, desire to f further strengthen cooperation between uh, the Suez Canal Authority and the Panama Canal Authority. Cooperation that has to cover areas of training, areas of sharing information, uh, tra uh, areas of marketing, and uh, how to, to better uh, have a better relations with the clients of both the Suez and the Panama Canal. Right. Uh, boosting uh, cooperation between uh, Egypt uh, and as well as South American countries uh, throughout uh, our relations with Panama. I mean, how can both countries see eye to eye on boosting the sense of cooperation between the uh, South American countries and also African ones? Well, definitely uh, Panama sees as Egypt as one of the main leaders uh, within uh, Africa and the Middle East. So for us, it's very important, and, and this is very clear. Uh, the Embassy of Panama in Egypt was the first uh, Panamanian embassy to be open in the African continent that we will, in a couple of years, will be celebrating six decades of diplomatic relations and, and opening this embassy in, in, in Egypt. Uh, we very much look forward to strengthen the ties of cooperation between uh, countries of Egypt and the Arab uh, world, Arab League as well, with South American and Latin American countries. Uh, definitely we need to expand this uh, dialogue that has been having been uh, taking place uh, through the summits of South America and the Arab League, opening, op opening up to the rest of Latin America. And I think Panama can contribute to this. Uh, we've been uh, being close to the Arab League as well in the maritime aspects uh, and the Arab Academy of Science, Technology, and Maritime Transportation, which is in Egypt, in Alexandria, yeah. is a specialized agency of the Arab League, an agency that Panama has been working closely uh, because uh, of the, gr the graduates that many of them work for uh, Panamanian flag vessels. Right. Uh, if we talk about the sense of training in that respect, uh, how, how about the programs that deal with the sense of exchange in the field of vocational training? Well, uh, definitely the Arab Academy has a very good program of training for their officials in the maritime uh, industry, and Panama ha as well is uh, having uh, the Panamanian University of Maritime Affairs, and the training that is done also by the Panama Canal Authority and the training that is done in the Suez Canal Authority. So we have many areas of cooperation, exchange of students, exchange mm -hmm. of professors, exchange of curricula that can help improve both our uh, institutions and having this uh, further training of uh, 
Egyptians, Arabs, uh, and Panamanians. Right. Uh, concerning uh, seeing eye to eye on more than one domain, Egypt and Panama, concerning the political level and regarding uh, important issues in, in the Middle East, I guess both countries see eye to eye vis-a-vis -vis those issues closely. Yes, uh, definitely there's a, an open dialogue and this is what happened in, in mm -hmm. at the highest level between presidents. Uh, Panama has been a country historically uh, mm -hmm. in the middle of the Americas and bringing people together. It's, it's, it's a meeting point uh, of, of different countries. We were um, quite a few centuries ago with uh, Simon Bolivar, we were hosting the mm -hmm. first uh, meeting of South American countries and countries of the Americas, which was later uh, eventually transformed into the Organization of American States, but it had its, its birth in Panama in this meeting. So definitely, Panama is a place that brings people together, and, and we saw that in, in April 2015 when mm -hmm. the historical meeting b between President Obama and President Castro from Cuba, uh, reestablishing and normalizing the diplomatic uh, relations between these two countries. So, so Panama has always been open to the dialogue, and this is the spirit that we have conveyed to Egypt, and we see Egypt as a, a pivotal role within the Middle East, mm -hmm. uh, bringing together uh, people, bringing, uh, putting forward the dialogue, the political dialogue that is necessary to uh, confront the challenges of the Middle East, especially the battle against terrorism and, and, and others. All right. Uh, citing or mentioning Excellency the battle against terrorism, how can uh, both Egypt and Panama work together to combat terrorism? in a sense of coordination between both countries? Well, uh, definitely we have, uh, I think the most important is the exchange of information. Yeah. And this is definitely one thing that uh, we have uh, spoken about. Uh, mm. Panama is very keen to help the aspect of financial, uh, fighting against the financing of terrorism. Mm -hmm. We have a very important financial center in Panama. Uh, w which is part of our service economy. So definitely Panama is keen to collaborate uh, and we have passed uh, 